I have a question for you, Heather. Yes. Um, I was totally blown away by the work you've put in to kind of encourage uh, diversity mm -hmm. in, in your company and also the high numbers of, of uh, women in, in, mm -hmm. um, in manager roles and, mm -hmm. and, and et cetera. There was one thing that I was missing there and that builds on a personal anecdote where I was actually uh, in the process of being recruited to uh, a global CMO um, position. Uh, and I was second runner up and they told me I was too old. Mm. So mm -hmm. how are you working with age diversity? Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. the race between young people and old people? We do. do. And there was a time in the company where I was the oldest person. And I was so glad when I was able to give the baton to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So now, but no, but seriously, so th that is actually something that is a, is a challenge. You know? And so for us, um, you know, uh, continuing, we, we are very open to it. Uh, to age, you know, to from, from a standpoint around age range, we have people who've actually who started with us as, as interns as young as 16, 17, all the way to we have people in our engineering team who are in their early 60s. Mm -hmm. So we do have that, but it's probably not as much as I would like to see, mm -hmm. um, but definitely. Um, it's, I think it's a challenge and something we, we're, we want to be more open to. Yeah, yeah. That's, we, that's a big thing going on in Silicon Valley right now yeah. um, is the kind of the graying, the graying of Silicon Valley and a lot of people are finding it very difficult once they kind of get into their 50s to actually be, uh, to find a job. They're actually getting screened out. So we don't screen, we don't do anything like that in terms of our processes, but it is something that is more a common practice. Yeah, that's why I'm a, yeah. um, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I'm 50 Let, years old. Yeah. So we should also introduce Johan Scott yes. from SafeMind, who is, uh, we uh, usually call you our favorite recruiter. Yeah, you, all, 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 you called me a feminist recruiter also one time. Did I? Yeah, yeah. you did. Yeah. True, true. <laughs> I took it in, I took it yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and we had, we had an interesting, the way we met was in a Facebook group for uh, women in tech and gaming, it's called, right? And you actually laid out your um, your bonons. Work ad, yeah. Yeah, work ad. And you said some, we started to chat, and you said to me, well, you're gonna be the first, you're gonna be the first and only woman on the uh, management team, or in, in, the, uh, in the leadership. And I said, had enough of that. It's got to be at least two. And that's how we started to chat. Uh, mm -hmm. And then finally we met yeah. in real life. And so what I did there was I haven't been a recruiter that long. So this is in the beginning when I was a recruiter, I had an ad and no one, you know, I didn't have any women that applied for the role. So I went out in this forum and asked, what am I doing wrong? I'm new at this. Please, please teach me. And mm, what happened was that yeah, this ad is not written for a, for a woman. And I said, but it's written for anyone. So then I learned, yeah, there's a lot of things that you need to think about when you put up a role to get more women into it, into to, uh, applying for the job. My hope is that I don't have to, but I do. One thing that um, interested me last year when we met was when you said that you recruit um, staff without a, uh, mm -hmm. a degree right and you've you've said today that it, it works out fine mm -hmm. uh, and i think that in sweden we're a little bit snobbish about i have a degree from so mm -hmm. really my question to you one and monica will you take would you recommend someone to a company without a degree and will you hire someone without a degree? definitely i do it all the time because i don't have a degree hmm? actually and i think well that's one way of looking at it, but we always ask our customers if it's needed, uh, what are they looking for, and, but there's a lot of people that I work with that don't have a degree. degree. Mm. And you, you, sorry to interrupt you, Monica, there, but uh, just to continue what you said before, you said that the customers want this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this is what we're going to present to them. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the customers ask for something. Our role is to, to say, well, we think you need this instead of what you want. Mm. And that's our biggest challenge and what we always do. And I think for us, uh, 
normally we say a degree or equivalent experience because experience might trump and the most important thing for us is actually that we get the right person with the right attitude and mm -hmm. uh, right, right mindset into mm -hmm. our team since we work team oriented we're only as good as the weakest chain in that in that mm -hmm. team uh, but i also think a difference in sweden is that education is more available mm. Then yes. it is. It's not. It's, it's not mm -hmm. a financial question mm -hmm. necessarily, but we do. But what we don't do is that for junior positions we do take in degrees because it's really hard to determine when you haven't really say like you're 17, 18, taking someone for for a tech job. We don't do that in IT. I know that we do it in some other parts of the organisation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for junior positions, uh, we do have, I don't know if you've actually taken your degrees, I haven't checked that, have we? <laughs> <laughs> but, we will, but that's normally, but otherwise we, we all usually say equivalent experience mm -hmm. and that works fine. The important thing is the person, their attitude, their, and, and the experience, what they bring to the table, not necessarily a diploma. I've seen a couple of girls and, and guys that are 18 years old and have done the coolest things ever. And, you know, presenting them to a customer, knowing that this one could be a, it's a future star. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest thing I can do, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I mean, they believe me. And even uh, suggesting to me that I should be the VP uh, of engineering of a cool startup in the United States. That totally brave. I could never do that, but... You could. You could. I know you could. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Build the right team around you. Yeah. You could. Absolutely. Do I yeah. understand it right that you're pretty unique in the US to work? Yeah, yeah, this I, way. I think we're, um, we are unique. So this is the first tech company that I've been a part of that didn't require a college degree. Yeah. So basically we would not accept any applicants that didn't have a college yeah. degree, period, end of stop. That was for pretty much the first 20 years of my, plus of my career, have I seen this? Um, and uh, it is very, I think there's this kind of a sense around um, kind of a, an elitism mm -hmm. in tech. Um, and it, you know, which also breeds a level of, you know, Monica talked about it, you know, basically women competing with women. Mm -hmm. Well, I just basically saw everyone competing with everyone. Yeah. And so versus a saying, you know, an opportunity, like some of our people who are most ardent um, supporters and helpers of, you know, mentorship, actually it's interesting to see people who have had the opportunity to go to college say, I wanna help those people who haven't mm -hmm. and doing and spending the extra hours and weekends coaching and mentoring them, helping them with coding skills, things like that. But that has not been the norm. Mm -hmm. It is still in, 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 you know, I, in Austin, Texas where we're, be, we're headquartered, um, we are still like somewhat of a maverick in, propo in you know, propo uh, proposing this and really you know, supporting this. Um, but more, co more companies are listening and taking note. And like, also the internships, like yeah. you know, usually people are like, oh, I'm going to have internships only in computer science versus no, I'm going to have internships across the company and invest in junior people to come in and to, again, because that takes a level of effort and investment, but again, it pays back yeah. uh, so much um, back to the company. I mean, you, you do have a history from your founder that had uh, yes. uh, some very um, uh, unusual or specific values. Mm -hmm. Are you still a privately held company? Yes, we are. Yeah. So we are. Mm -hmm. Will that mean, uh, will you have, Monica, have a, a bigger problem being a noted company? company? I absolutely think that privately held companies can be much more long term mm. than the noted that that generally you, you're much more focused about the quarter than, mm -hmm. the, than the three year if you look to, to your right. one of your values. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we need to work with these questions because if you look at our customers and, and the Swedish society, I mean, we, we, need to, we need to represent that in, in what we do. Otherwise, we won't be successful, maybe not next quarter, but the quarter after that. So, so in this sense, I don't see mm -hmm. a challenge, but I do think it's much easier to be truly long term mm -hmm. if you if you have a if you privately owned mm -hmm. you want i'm really curious we didn't delve into that uh, did you write a new job ad and how did it go um, trying to remember uh, i did write a new directly with every suggestion that came in i changed it a bit so then i put it out again and said yeah this is the result um well they liked it but um, for that role, what was it? CTO role, I think. Yeah. At a small company. Yeah. Uh, oh, it has so many. Was it no, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> very techy company. Yeah, but yeah, I, I yeah. do. If it were a, a woman that we ha uh, that we helped recruit there, I would remember it. So yeah. I don't think it was. But afterwards, after that, it's been a lot more because yeah. I learned so much and put so much. It's not just about me. It's my whole company where I work. We're only eight people, but. Um, 
we are all pretty good at this, you know, and we learn from each other and we learn from our customers and from everyone. So it's being something big now for us. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What was the big differences in the second version of the uh, ad and what was kind of the things most people reacted to? Uh, it has been mentioned already today by you. Um, the women was, well, all these points that you needed to have, uh, the women say, oh, I don't have one of these 10, yeah. uh, mm. so they don't apply. But this guy had two out of 10 and he applied. And so that was one thing, you know, just putting the, the, mm -hmm. the thing there that you don't need anything. You don't need everything on the list. You, that's one thing. And, and more about the, the softer parts of a role, uh, what you get for the role, not just what, you're, uh, what you should do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things around that. And the best ad we had, <laughs> we have had now recently with a lot of women uh, applying for it was um, started out with bullet points and sort of as an ad looks, but then uh, the company or the person that had had the role today rewrote it, and it's more like a story mm. of how her work is, mm. and what mm. she do, and mm -hmm. what everything about it. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we need to learn something more, more relatable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have another CEO here of a really disruptive um, startup. I think we can call it a startup. It's Gustav Winberg from uh, Uptrade. Sure. Yeah, come on. Hi, I'm Hi. Heather. Good to, see, good to see you. So, Gustav, you can take the mic and just yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So, my name is Gustav Winberg, and I'm the CEO and co founder of Uptrade. And uh, for you guys who don't know about Uptrade, we're um, a two-year-old startup uh, within uh, uh, digital recruitment. And um, basically what we do is to um, help people apply for jobs wherever they are in less than 30 seconds. And uh, our ambition is to change the way people apply for jobs um, in a more mobile way. Because that mm -hmm. was the big disconnect we saw in the market when we started. It's so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I was actually, uh, when I was running the, the mobile operator, my own startup, I think I was uh, one of the first um, customers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's three years ago. So, you're still growing and the business model is holding and people like it? Yes, yes. So, um, so today, actually, I think it was two years ago because we launched, we're, um, now on Friday, we're celebrating two years okay. since our first release. Uh, and uh, now we've had... Uh, I mean, we tripled the revenues from last year. We were 10, 11 people now, and uh, we've had uh, almost 1,000 different brands uh, putting their ads on our trail. What about diversity? Uh, do you have um, an equality or diversity policy, and how do you work with that? Internally on Uptrail, you mean? Uh, yeah, we, we are looking at it a lot. We're trying to. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, an overweight on men still. Uh, and uh, we've also had the challenges, like everybody else, to... to uh, uh, get female and or women in, in the tech department, um, but we're trying to. Uh, I mean, we're trying to be a very open and diverse. I mean, there there is more diversity and more than just gender, but but we're we're more heavily on in in women in um, the marketing and sales department than in tech. Can like I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you you help a lot of customers writing the ads also. Yep. How have you worked? You know. You heard part of my story, how I learned more about how to uh, mm -hmm. apply more to women. Uh, are you working with it, that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. That was Annika. <laughs> I was going to whisper something to are her. Are you working with it that way? <laughs> you know, helping the customers write their ads so it applies for more diversity? Uh, well, we help all clients to tell their story and do storytelling through images, uh, icons, and mobile optimized texts uh, and of course the questions um, but I, th I think at the core since when you apply for a job using Uptrail you don't have to attach your CV or cover letter and I would argue that in a way that is more neutral to gender because it's more focused on competence on, on what you know uh, rather than looking at the CV and where the, the, the image the picture of the person becomes a high factor and uh, the name obviously is a <laughs> revealer of, of, of uh, your sex uh, and, and when you look at an application through Uptrail, it's, it's a big emphasis on, on uh, your competence and your experience. Mm. I have an idea. Hey. Let's put the women in the middle. So, Monica and Heather, please. Okay. And, and we have the guys to flank you, okay? Uh, so, yes, Anna. Yeah. 
Uh, Monica showed in uh, one of her nine points was the mountain. Mm -hmm. Take point. risks. Yeah, take risks. And you, you actually posted a question about are women less apt to uh, take that risk or to apply for that role that it's a little bit further away uh, compared to, to men? What do you think? think about that. Well, I definitely Heather. have seen that. Yeah. I, ab absolutely. I think, again, back to the whole thing around women want to be very complete. Yeah. Women tend to want to be perfect. Um, and so if they don't do something that, you know, in a list of 10 things, if they don't do everything completely and everything yeah. perfectly, then they step back versus saying, again, telling more like, it would be great if you had experience doing these things. Mm. And like, you know, kind of we like talked about the ads, but also just encouraging women to, to be more confident about what they have achieved. And I think that that's one of the things, like the, one of the biggest learnings for me over my career has been to be more focused on my strengths versus my weaknesses. Mm. And so, you know, too often I think women are so focused on what I don't do well that it, instead of really focusing on how do I amplify what I really do do well, yeah. And again, back to like what, you know, even your comment, like, hey, I may not be a, a, this, this role. Actually, maybe you actually be the perfect person yeah. for that role because then you can assemble a group of people that play to your weaknesses while you focus on your mm -hmm. strengths, creativity, mm -hmm. vision, knowledge, process, whatever yeah. your thing is. So again, I think that like, like too often when I'm like, oh, I hear a role um, about in another function, another area, and they say, I can't do that when actually they could. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I think it's something that, again, you also perhaps is as you learn with a little bit with time, but it is something that I definitely uh, encourage women, be more bold, be confident, yeah. leverage and play to your strengths. Yeah. Actually, that was the statement. My question was if it was genetic or we yeah. actually teach our, yeah. our children or our daughters that they mm -hmm. need to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know see what you see about the culture in, in the U.S. compared to if it's a genetic thing or if it's actually something that we very early tell our, our daughters. Well, if you think about, you know, I have two daughters, one that's 10 and 12, and, you know, they're both very high risk taking. They like to try new things. They like to do things. And so just like, how do you make sure that that doesn't go away? How do you not get stamped that out? So where they're in that environment of like them wanting to try new things and do things that are not necessarily, you know, boy things and girl things. Um, you know, my daughter right now has got a picture. You guys will probably, um, but my daughter is at home uh, this morning. She's out kayaking you know, on her own, uh, 10 years old, and she loves it, and she feels very independent. So, like, why, you know, kind of like that, kind of that yeah. same spirit, like, how do you make sure that that comes into the workplace, yeah. you know? Okay, so not yeah. genetic, then. The, we I, th I, think it's in, I think it's like it's things we tell. It it, is, yeah. It's hopeful, but at the same time, yeah. it's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> we can do something about it. Right. Yeah. Well, I, you know, an, another thing is, you know, you talked, the, I think the slides, uh, the very beginning of the day, you talked about how the trend of how women are leaving, mm. and I've seen that. Yeah. You know, I came oh, into it, a culture, I went in, I started my career at Anderson Consulting, which is now Accenture, very diverse, lots of women starters, yeah. but then by the time five years in, they were you know, less gone. Then you know, when I was there, it was eight years, right. even fewer women stayed. Yep. Um, and so kind of that whole thing where women dropping out. Um, and so I think, again, back to the, how do we create a, an environment where more women are encouraged at all levels um, and really want to stay. Yeah, and something you said was, uh, or how you work, is that you uh, take in someone for one position, then you train them to do something else. Mm -hmm. and, you know, higher, higher character traits and skills is your m mantra. Um, I think that's something that I also try to work with a lot, uh, because the customer says that they want something, but if maybe it's 10 years of experience of that role, but then they, they know how to do it, then they have no driving force forward. Mm -hmm. That's also something for women, if they say that they can't do it, yeah, well then you, te you learn, and then mm -hmm. you have the more, more, you're more driven. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, so that, that's something important that we always try to put out, is that you want to do this. You, you can't do it already, you want to do it, as for this role. I want to do it. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> like I said to you, Monica, when you have the uh, Chief Innovation Officer position at Comham, I want that. <laughs> Maybe I do too, and start competing with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another, uh, which you touched on, uh, Heather, was to, um, uh, how do you keep your high performers? And perhaps this is a question to you, Monica. I mean, this mm -hmm. is, uh, I think, a problem in many companies that the best people, they leave because they're, they're not stimulated enough. They don't get enough challenges. 
uh, I think you need to uh, uh, not, I mean, first of all, you need to be on an individual basis. What is a challenge? For us is to give very, a lot of freedom to our tech teams to decide themselves, to try new things, to have innovation, try out new frameworks, whatever, so you can develop your technical skill. Uh, and for me, that's the most important part. And then if we are people who want to take the managerial uh, career, that's another path. And we need to uh, make sure that we keep those going. But I think it is to give a lot of freedom, actually, mm. and a lot of responsibility in to that is what, how we do it because we, do, we can't have like a consulting firm that they have kind of different levels. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we rather n you need to find your own d development. And I think it's worked really well for us uh, so far, actually keeping our talents and mm. high performers. Mm. Uh, any question you from you guys? Here we go. Annika. Ah. The oh. mic. Um, so I've heard sort of a lot about uh, attracting women to the workplace and sort of keeping them there. Uh, but I sort of like to know how you guys see about sort of encouraging a team to embrace diversity if they're not that diverse to begin with. Um, so sort of for a team that is mostly white males, how do you sort of break that pattern and stop there from being unconscious bias, where you're just hiring more people who are the same. You want to go first? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, but I think it's about um, understanding and ec explaining the value of diversity. Why should we have diversity? And uh, of course, it's not just about sex. It could be about um, ethnicity or political views mm -hmm. to have a great mix of, of uh, what is out there. Because essentially, you have to reflect uh, the market, your target audience, and it's probably going to be much more than just white males in in their 30s or 40s. Uh, so, and uh, and I think really that great uh, company cultures and great products com comes from that mix between uh, that happens in diversity. So I think that would be my answer to to emphasize and explain the value of it. Yeah, I, the, I said made that comment about set an intention. So I was literally just having this conversation with a, a founder CEO. Um, of a company who currently is 14 white males. And he said, Heather, how, you know, we really want to be more diverse. And I said, have you basically made it clear to all of your employees uh, that your intention is to actually create, that you're going to break the cycle of what you've just created? Like you have to actually be super intentional to say, we're going to have to way overcome this and that our next role, we're going to take longer, be more thoughtful and reflective because we have to bring in some diversity and be conscious and intentional about it. And so I said, until you do that, you're not, you're going to hire just the next person who looks just like the, the person before. Um, and so I think part of that has to be because the, the leader, the leadership and there has to be an, basically that everyone's bought in from a values perspective that it's important. And I, I totally agree with you. I talked about the, having it in your DNA, in your company. As for me, as the leader, I, I need to put targets on my, on my uh, executive saying that you need to break the pattern and the next one you will be something else. And we will take the extra time or cost or whatever, mm -hmm. walk that extra mile to make that happen until I, until I tell that very, very clearly. I don't think that will change because it's outside of the comfort zone. And, and of course, in, I think you need at least two then to break the pattern. Otherwise, it's mm -hmm. going to be perhaps a very hard time for that first uh, right. uh, token, uh, mm -hmm. woman, minority, whatever it is. But I actually think exactly as you take the decision and then actually d do it all the way, not just having it on a piece of paper. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of uh, recruitment is done by. Um, internal, you know, you re recruit someone you know or some, someone knows someone. And that means if you are all white male, you have your net, your closest network are probably just like you. It's not only female male, it's a team can't be all, you know, be the same kind of people. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but then it, you don't do it effect, um, a pretty good job. So you need diversity in personalities also. Mm -hmm. And my best uh, is to hire a, uh, a recruitment consultant that has another network. Mm. I need to say that, yeah. Of course, that would be your <laughs> surprise, surprise. You yeah. But if so, so but it, but then you hi if you hire that woman or you hire the person who let's just say you hire a team and you say we're going to have somebody who's 
um, who's a different ethnicity than the group or different sexual orientation or a woman or whatever is this person, and then they come and they're not treated where they can have their, you know, created where with respect, if they're not given the same uh, uh, voice as everybody else, if they're not given the same opportunity to do the right thing in their judgment, then the whole thing breaks down and then they leave. And so again, what, uh, back to that phrase I said earlier, diversity attracts diversity. So if diversity is coming in and diversity feels heard, they can be themselves, they can thrive, then they'll tell others, people from their circles and their networks to come, you know, to come in and then it kind of creates a virtuous circle. So again, back to the whole thing around, it really does boil down to what are your core values and are you living your core values every day? Do those core values represent kind of the environment that where people who are diverse can thrive? Hello. Uh, just bringing Hi. back to the point of leaning in that came up earlier mm -hmm. today, it seems to me that discussion is very much still on women behaving more as men or as women. No, I mean um, certain qualities that are so carefulness is often connected to other values, other possibly valuable characteristics. And instead of it seems more that um, maybe it, it just seems that the emphasis is more on women taking more risk rather than valuing other aspects mm -hmm. of not risk taking such as responsibility, instead of putting emphasis on that, the emphasis is on what women doesn't do. Is that completely wrong? <laughs> no, no, I mean, in this discussion. I'll I let mean. you go first, I can. Yeah, well, I, I, I talked on about that, because I, I think that we, if we as women, we need to change some things, and I, I do think that, and I was talked, we need to change how we recruit, but I also think that we as women in tech have a responsibility to actually dare a bit more even though we're outside of a comfort zone, to, to make a change. But I think that's the only way I think we should adapt. We should not take crap. We should not do a lot of other things that we... But I actually do think, and I don't think it is a lean-in. No, uh, but I mean, that's the discussion we had. I, I, I'm not sure if I think. And, and just to, to, um, to take a risk in your next challenge, to dare to do something that they haven't ticked everything on the box, uh, doesn't mean that you're less responsible and being responsible doesn't always mean that you are not risk prone so I don't see it goes together but I think it's an interesting debate and that's not a clear 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 answer but in this case I actually think that we as women need to step forward a bit to make a change I don't so, see how it could work any other way actually yeah I, I guess my view to you is that you should um, I think for women you should be able to be yourself and so if part of who, if you're not naturally um, a risk taker or you're more focused on other things, that's fine. Um, I think, so that, not the same, but I think in terms of as, a, as, as kind of womankind, so in terms of versus like just the individual, but you think about kind of women as, as a whole, and particularly I think part of what gives you confidence is really understanding what your strengths are and having time and perspective to, you know, to over time to do that. And I think that women, um, well, if, again, if you're focusing on your strengths, you're focusing on what, where you feel comfortable, then you're going to thrive and you're going to exceed. And when you start to exceed expectations, you start to do things better, you'll have more opportunity. And as you have more opportunity, again, you get the opportunity to give other people an opportunity. So again, I, I would not say like, if you're naturally hardwired a certain way, that you have to operate and be somebody else because uh, you won't be successful, but instead being in environments where you can be yourself and you can amplify your strengths will allow you to succeed and allow you to have you know, new opportunities. But I do think that uh, as a whole, women tend to be um, where they don't give themselves enough credit. They tend to listen too much to the voice inside their head that says, you know, I don't have enough or don't have this, I don't have that. And so I guess be, con be conscious of that and push yourself, whatever is your com in your comfort zone. Yeah, I just thought that part of being Seeing my strength is also seeing the strength of typically fem female behavior. So maybe taking responsibility for caring for a team, if that takes the shape of making fika, that can also have its strength. But, it, but sometimes the focus seems very much to, to remove some of those behaviors, or a lot of them. <laughs> As I said when I started, this is going to be a, a kind of a sport of generalizing yeah. because that's what you do. And when I said about the FICA thing, also my thing is that I've, I've seen kind of uh, women coming in, maybe not being the one being the caretaker, but 
getting into that because they, because the female they're expected to be the one that buys the fika that buys the present if someone goes away that fixes everything because usually if you stereotype the administrator secretary role has been woman and so that, that's why I don't want to degrade anyone to role because they're female and, and so you don't um, disqualify your competence to be the one oh, only doing that that's why I want to see all of those things circle in the team uh, but I do think we have a lot of strength as women which make us that mm -hmm. we choose some certain roles but just in tech I think that some of those actually don't play as well and I don't I, I, I'm, I'm a bit worried about those. So on a general level, I don't, I'd rather not having all of my... Uh, my there'd always be the women that is the, as we call it in Sweden, bull mama. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have it varied. Um, and in, in, a, in a general sense, uh, I think we as women need to step forward a bit. But then again, what I also said and I think is important is, is that we write our ads and we, and we look in places where we don't normally look, so we attract people that are responsible and maybe not the one taking greatest risk but have huge competence, and that is a real challenge for us finding. So it, it's not black and white as it never is in these questions. C can I comment on that shortly? Uh, uh, one norm that I find uh, very... Uh, or I did find it very annoying was that um, if I spent 50 hours or 60 hours a week at work, if I spent nights, I was much better or, or I was uh, perceived much better than if I worked my 40 hours and get my job done within the 40 hours. That I think is one of those norms that uh, actually is a more of a male norm. Um, I have two daughters, I have a husband who takes 50% of the work at home, but I will never get that 100% freedom, which many of my male colleagues always did get. Uh, and, and isn't that one of the most valuable or one of the things mm -hmm. that come up with women? The time mm -hmm. spent at work, is, it's like top one, two, three, always. And that's something that's got to change. Because if it, if it doesn't, um, I won't be there. Mm. We have another question? Yeah. Thank you for an interesting discussion. Uh, I'm wondering, Heather, how do you like attain information when it comes to sexual orientation and so forth among your employees? Do you conduct like staff diversity surveys? Or mm -hmm. We do. We do. We do. Right. So we do an anonymous. Um, so we specifically gather, you know, things that are already that are kind of you know known, like you know, do you have a college degree? Um, you know, your ethnicity, some of those kind of normal things are kind of when you do your application, those are, we track that. But then things like um, sexual orientation, um, we basically have done an anonymous survey. So we asked if people, this is an area where just in general we have, you know, we're very um, open about and supporting the LGBT community. And so the, basically our employees basically said, let's do a survey, because I think people were wanting to know and, and just do it anonymously. And so we captured that. All right. And so 5% of our employees identified themselves in that community. So is that common among the companies in the States? Or because I don't believe that's very common in Sweden. Um, I don't think it's that very common in the U.S. either. All right. Yeah. But yeah. I think, again, for us, it's, you know, it's, a, there's, it's a big, big area of focus, um, particularly um, uh, just you know, the, the rights of people with a sexual orientation um, and being, you know, kind of put in question. If you've been re reading the news in the U.S. about, you know, same-sex marriage, some states support it, some states don't. All this stuff about, you know, bathrooms, all this kind of stuff. So for us, we want to be an environment that supports, um, be very open, and be supportive of people um, who are gay. Yeah. I actually have a question for Johan and Gustav, because uh, today we've been talking a lot about the responsibilities for women to get out there, uh, take risks, uh, don't take shit and so on. And there's a lot of responsibilities on the women to kind of take the, the whole sole responsibility for diversity and gender equality. Uh, but I'm really interested in uh, what kind of responsibility and how are you, what's your idea to kind of add to the 
you know, to, to what women are trying to accomplish. What are you willing to compromise with? Are you aware of the privileges you have? And do you have any ideas of how to support this struggle? Um, I can just talk about myself, but I, I have it from my, you know, my raising up. I have it with me, you know, uh, equality. And so I've always been interested in doing my thing because I have the privilege and I know it. Um, so it started out with my first job and I, it's always been a, you know, important thing for me. So, but it's always been a lot of talk and no action. So I've seen it as my, you know, my thing to, to bring to the table is let's take action, let's do something about it. Let's not, not just talk about it, make policies. We have to do something about it. And I think that's where men also is really important. So that we all do it. Because that was your question. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, um, but I think it's very important, and I think as as a leader, if you're in a leading position, you have to include everybody. Um, so it's very interesting listening to to the debate here. Um, but I, when I look at our comp our company, because our culture is, we say that uh, you'd rather uh, apologize than you ask for permission. So we have a very daring culture, and we have, we want to be we call it like good recklessness. Uh, not, not in a bad way, so you don't have to be worried if you want to be clients, mm -hmm. but we really want to you know, push the envelope <laughs> yeah. a lot and we really want to try new things. And uh, we're not afraid of doing mistakes. Um, but when, when I look into our company, we have 30% women. And I don't, because I don't see it like this safety thing should be a female treat, because in our organization it's kind of the opposite. Uh, we have to slow them down. Uh, so, so I, I don't, um, this generalization doesn't fit for our culture. But I think as a leader, you just have to be including and and um, yeah, and that's how we work with it. We're very yeah. I think it's really important for uh, you know. I get I get really scared when I hear stories uh, f from women what they are you know put up to, and mm -hmm. my my role there is to when I see it act, take action on it. Um, I think that's really important also because I I hear about and see so a lot of men that are just plain stupid, you know. Um, and I have been working in the, in the restaurant business or as a chef, so uh, I heard a lot, but already then I, I took action. Yes, don't. It's just stupid. Um, but I, think, I think that's something to... to but you, ca you can't tell someone that they're stupid. It's, a, it's the stupidest thing you can do. But <laughs> yes, just tell them that, okay, what you're doing right now is this and this, and it, uh, it gives you know, the feeling for this and this. Just explain what they're doing, and maybe they understand it then. If they don't, then you can tell them they're stupid. That's so important. Actually, I had uh, an incident at work. Uh, I'll tell you later, Monica, about this. Uh, but where there was one person questioning what I had done, um, which I'm kind of used to. But then this other man, he actually covered my back so nicely and so just said, that's bullshit. She's doing, it. She's doing the absolute right thing. And I realized that I was so surprised that one man took my position against this other man and it felt so good mm -hmm. and that i wish that you mm -hmm. guys would do for me and for everyone else more often say hey don't do that she's right mm -hmm. if she is right yeah if you go online and if, she, and if, if, she, and if she's wrong or or you well, think she's wrong have a have a, have a yeah. agree to disagree yeah. have a debate exactly. have some discussion like it's like we don't want everybody getting along all the time yeah. because then no no ideas yeah. no creativity yeah. because so that's like the, you, know, the, you talked about like what, yeah. what you said Monica sometimes it's yeah. very lonely i mean it's nice that someone goes out on a limb for you yeah yeah absolutely sorry one more thing you know if i try to stay off facebook as much as possible because i I want to take action on every stupid comment, <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. So then, the easiest way for me is to stay away from it. Mm. But that's not the solution. But call them. Yeah, it's, it's a full-time job. You just sit there to tell people. Well, I can't really tell them they're stupid. No. I know, but in my opinion, they are. But yeah. then I had need to have a discussion with them. It's pretty hard. Yeah. We have another question. And I just wanted to comment on your comment. Uh, saying that when I took my talk, it was not just as, as a woman doing things, it's also as a manager, looking out for all these signs mm -hmm. also. Is someone giving crap? I'm going to be there immediately and say that that's not okay, that's not how we do it in this company. And, and really 
live through our values every day. And I'm, since I'm, and that's what I expect for all of my colleagues and my uh, mm -hmm. and my peers as well, no matter what, <laughs> mm. <laughs> male, woman, uh, any. Is my, it's my expectation and requirement, actually. It's not always that the, everyone does it, but it's going to be not only a woman's task, there is everyone working in, in a workplace wanting it to be better, need to, to kind of take action. You pull rank. <laughs> I can do that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my question is kind of personal. I, I wonder, do you have an, any advice to handle the kind of fatigue that can happen? I mean, for me personally, it's a roller coaster. I don't have the stamina to every day, I mm -hmm. mean, trying to speak up, trying to say stuff, and, and a lot of, often I get like laughs. It could be nervous laughs, or it could be that people think I am silly or stuff like that. How, how can you handle that? So the, f the fatigue of like just basically having to like stand up for yourself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you, what's kind of like the relationship you have with your manager and your leader? Is, Is he, he sitting right there? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, a heavy, that's a heavy burden, right? So if you feel like you're constantly having to do that, maybe, maybe it's not as bad, at, at, you know, or maybe it might be better at work, but it's maybe difficult in other places, which I've seen that too. I yeah, mean, like, like for or, tech everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I mean, yeah. Meetups, conferences, everything like that, the tech business sort of as a whole. Right. So, um, so kind of, I guess, the perspective, kind of like the way you talked about it, where you want to go and fight every single thing, um, is don't, like, maybe don't take that on. So basically just say, what is the mode that I'm going to be, how I'm going to be comfortable with how I'm presenting myself, and I'm going to do the things that I would like to be the change I want to see for everyone else, versus feeling like you have to take every single thing in, every input in is something you have to react to, versus being very much focused on, how do I want to present myself at this conference? Do I, am I in a mode that I need to be, you know, kind of on and presenting, or am I in a mode where I'm taking back and I'm listening and learning? So, so like, I don't know, I just, maybe just temper it, but um, I'm trying to think how best to, but I, yeah. I, I think that we, with yeah. more experience, have a great responsibility to, to our younger yes. colleagues. And I think that uh, Sheryl Sandberg says uh, one of her points that, uh, be sure to sit at the table, Yes, uh, 100%. And I think that's, if it's where I work and I see someone who's younger or doesn't have the 23 right. years experience, that's my damn responsibility to make sure that, that you <laughs> get that a same seat as, as mm -hmm. everyone else and that no one laughs at you or no one says funny little shitty things. So that yeah, I think don't just but also just don't don't take so much on yourself. No, that's yeah, that's, yeah, um, yeah. Can don't because it yeah. can be overwhelming, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But we, I mean, yeah. we know we've been there too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, being newly yeah. graduated and it was absolutely not it's very it's, easy. It's not easy. No. No. Absolutely. And nowadays, because I've also been there. Nowadays, I kind of I kind of decided where is my limit. Yeah. And what? When do I react? When do I just let it? Like as I said in Swedish, that was for day. I can think that mentally that. I don't need to take this in. And when it's really, really important for me to act. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, because you can't take every fight every time, but if mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. meet a lot of idiots in daily life, and that's how to be about gender, it can be about other things. You really need to choose what is mm -hmm. relevant for me or have someone actually stepped over my line. And for me, that's crystal clear. And it's going to be crystal clear for that person as well when they've stepped over the line and something is just let pass because it's not an important person and it's not an important fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A question back, can you ask for help? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really uh, a daily problem, especially not at work. I know I have my boss now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. But, but I mean, it's kind of a... Um, yes, I need to practice this. I need to practice not taking it all in. And, mm -hmm. and that I, I can get help, I can get coaching and everything, but, but also the advice and everything around it where... where does my responsibility end? Where does other people's uh, take on? And how how can you ask for help when you're in a very public um, domain like meetups, conferences? I mean, you might be there on your own and you mm -hmm. might feel very uh, alone. And I mean, it could be really hard and, and get tiring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at work, especially people I know, I can You need to take me help. with you, to yes, and I will fight everyone. <laughs> I'll come with you to every conference. Yeah, I'll come as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. 
How are we doing on time, Anna? Oh, it's uh, still have time for some more questions yes. if there are any. Or if you guys want to share something. Anything else? No. Yeah, oh, no. okay. Uh, have you set up goals for like uh, how many percent of women you uh, would like in your uh, company? We haven't. You haven't? We have not. We've not okay. set specific quotas or targets, et cetera. We've what? just basically, um, I would say that when we were earlier and we knew that we were at a place where we didn't have the diversity we wanted, we were very intentional about how we would open things up but in kind of getting the, getting the flywheel started, so to speak, of getting more people coming to the company. But since then, we haven't really set any kind of formal targets or quotas. I think if things started to slip or we saw that we were not, the balance of, for example, um, we're almost 30% women. So if we were to start to see that that was, we we're not keeping women or retaining women, then we might take different action. Yeah. You won. What did you want to say? That it was really impressive. That you've done it without, you know, setting the... Oh, I thank think you. It's really good. Thank you. I could just add one thing, and that's... I think it was mentioned earlier about um, uh, women tending not to overrate themselves and, and men doing it. Because when you apply on a, uh, for a job using Uptrail, uh, a typical scenario is that uh, because you apply via questions, the, the interview starts on the job ad. So it's typically, let's say it's a developer role, and so first, how many years do you have working in .NET? And then it could be uh, rate yourself on a scale one to 10 on mm -hmm. coding in C Sharp. And uh, I don't have any statistics on it myself, but from just anecdotally speaking to, to clients, they have said this themselves that men tend to overrate themselves to put an eight when no they're shit. five, <laughs> and women. So, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I would just yeah, want to share that. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I have used Uptrail, uh, and, and you know some of the applicants that I have, yeah, it's really true what you say. Um, it's more about we're asking, do you know this? Do you know this? Do you know this? And then someone can say, yeah, I know all this. And then when you start talking with them, well, they want to work with all this. And I think that's good. If it's a, uh, it could be a good way. You know, do you want to work with this? So we have a lot in our ads. This is what you want to work with. This is the basic that you need to have. But this is what you want to do. Uh, and that is an answer to an earlier question also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how to get more women. Exactly. But are you thinking of product development and looking into this and maybe develop some function that level this out between, from your experience coding and people rate? Or, uh yeah, so, so most of our, our clients use coding test as the next step. Mm -hmm. um, so we're mostly a function to, to fill your talent pipeline to, to get candidates to apply. But we are looking at it a lot, and I think uh, knowing these things as an employer, uh, I mean, talking about the, the employer's role in this and the hiring manager, to understanding this um, without, because the risk is that you tend to generalize, which I always think is quite mm -hmm. dangerous. Um, but, the, but definitely, we're looking to, to, uh, to product development, and we're looking at right now how we can balance the questions in a way, and this is one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, day. Yes. So, uh, Last chance now. Any yes. more questions? Any more questions? Remember, a whole year until the next <laughs> time you're able to ask Well, questions. I'll, I'll break that. I'll say, uh, yeah. if you have any questions, whether I'll see you at work, perhaps, you can come and ask me. Nelly, you can come and ask me next week, every week. And you can yeah. go to the yeah. mingle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there is an after party. Yeah. So hopefully, maybe one or two of our uh, distinguished guests will stay. I know Gustav will stay, and hopefully yeah. all of you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you can just go and talk to them, or us, or Anna. Yeah. And you know, at 5 o'clock, there will be the uh, interview with uh, Snowden yeah. uh, on Link. Perfect. Which I think will be very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much for coming from Kungsholmen, from the US, from Stockholm. Way out there. Way out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.